License Hearing and Public Safety Committee is adjourned. Um, not adjourned, called to order. <laughs> um, roll call, Alderperson Barb Feldy, I'm here. Alderperson Betty Ackley? Here. Alderperson Dean Decker? Here. Ma Alderperson Amanda Salazar? Here. All right, we're all present. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Introduction to the committee members. We'll start with Dean and go on down. Alderperson Dean Decker from District 6. Alderperson Barb Feldy. Uh, Chair of the Council and District 1 representative. Alderperson Betty Ackley, District 4. Alderperson? Alderperson Amanda Salazar, District 3. We'll go to staff. <laughs> All right. Um, approval of the minutes from May 12th, 2021. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item for discussion and possible action. General ordinance number 3-2. 21-22-517-21, an ordinance amending the municipal code so as to temporarily reduce fees for sidewalk cafes. Chuck. All right. All right, so uh, you do have the ordinance uh, with uh, board docs and basically it's just putting into place uh, what you asked for at the last meeting uh, your, from your discussion. Uh, so it uh, reduces the cost of a sidewalk cafe permit uh, in half uh, for this current license year, uh, beginning April 15, 2021, ending April 14, 2022. Uh, and so the cost will actually be 50 cents per square foot uh, with a minimum fee of $25. All the other requirements are the same as they were pre-pandemic. And then just as a matter of cleanup, I did uh, remove then the items that applied only to the license year of 2020. Uh, so that's, that's what's there. And the, the recommended uh, motion would be to uh, uh, recommend adoption of the ordinance. I make a motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Chair is an aye. Ordinance number 179 20 21 419 21 submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2021, December 31st, 2021, April 14th, 2022. June 30th, 2022, and June 30th, 2023. Taxi cab license application number 4447, Carrie M. Henney. Did you mean to uh, skip the one before that on the Purdue Pharma? We can do the, no. we can do them in whatever order you want, but. Okay, I was following the agenda ones, not oh, the one it's you just oh, it's handed a, I didn't see it. It oh. looks oh. to me oh, that it's not in the same order. It's no, not. It is. You just missed it. It's okay. That's, That's all right. We'll just do that one. Well, we'll do the care. We'll do the Henning one, and then and then we'll go to the. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. It. Sorry about that. Yep. So um, this is uh, a, dra a taxi cab driver's license application. Uh, Carrie Henning. Uh, this matter is on for a hearing on denial uh, of a new license. Uh, Mr. Henning is not here. Uh, we're not surprised by that because he did fail to respond to our letter. Uh, asking him to respond uh, prior to the hearing. Uh, so uh, we will do the hearing and then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, 
And Lieutenant Stelter will be at the other uh, mic and uh, will just answer a couple of questions that I have. So Lieutenant Stelter, uh, you're familiar with the taxi cab driver's license application of Carrie M. Henning, is that correct? Uh, and uh, you are aware of uh, his record of violations that is related to the license activity as well, is that correct? Yes. And included in that uh, record would be uh, some uh, traffic violations, which would include a uh, 2015 uh, operating while intoxicated from the village of Sheboygan Falls, uh, which he did reveal on his application. A 2016 failure to main control a vehicle from the Sheboygan Municipal Court that he failed to reveal. And a 2017 speeding 89 and a 65 from circuit court that he failed to reveal. Is that correct? Correct. He also uh, did uh, um, reveal that he had felony drug charges, but didn't uh, uh, give the details on those. And what that is, is a 2017 felony conviction for manufacture or delivery of heroin as a party to the crime. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, specifically, while it's, it's fairly clear what the traffic violations are related to the license activity, what is it about uh, delivery uh, of drug charges that uh, makes it relevant to a taxi cab driver license? Uh, with my experience as a law enforcement officer in the community, uh, specifically as a street crimes officer and uh, supervising the street crimes unit later, and then eventually supervising our Sheboygan County Drug Unit, We've had numerous investigations into people that have been taxi cab drivers that were suspected of delivering drugs. That would obviously be the biggest concern with the uh, license going to him. Okay. Those are all the questions that I would have. Is so there any other questions? Our recommendation would be uh, to deny the license then. I make a motion to deny the license. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. All right, now we'll back up Chuck. Sorry about that. A resolution authorizing the city attorney's office to take all appropriate action on behalf of the city of Sheboygan related to Purdue Pharma LPS bankruptcy. Thomas. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to go into as much detail on this one or as little detail as you would like. Uh, in short, in uh, 2019, Purdue Pharma declared bankruptcy. Uh, Purdue Pharma is the manufacturer of OxyContin and their bankruptcy was based uh, in part because of the opioid litigation going on nationally. Uh, there have been a lot of claimants in this bankruptcy. There are 7,600 municipalities that have filed a claim against Purdue Pharma and about 470,000 individuals who filed claims against Purdue Pharma. So this is, this is a very big bankruptcy which reflects the, the broad nature of the opioid, opioid crisis. Um, the city of Sheboygan did file a claim. Uh, it filed a claim for about $8.4 million, which is a lot. That's uh, Part of that is costs actually incurred by the city to this point. Part of that is prospective costs estimated to um, capture what the city would have to spend to abate the opioid crisis um, between 2020 and 2040. There's no expectation that we'll ever see $8.4 million. Um, that's very typical in bankruptcy where you get hopefully pennies on the dollar um, for your claim. Um, but because this is such a large bankruptcy, there really is no opportunity to negotiate deadlines and to move those deadlines. It would be really unworkable if each of the 470,000 individual claimants could extend a deadline because it didn't work for them. So because of that, there, um, there are a number of, of deadlines and expected deadlines coming up. And the thought to make it workable is to delegate and authorize the city attorney's office to make the necessary decisions. So there's a bankruptcy plan uh, which Purdue Pharma has, has proposed. Uh, that plan would, the, the headline on that plan is that it makes $10 billion available to help deal with the opioid crisis. Uh, $10 billion sounds like a lot. There's some asterisks on that plan. It's $10 billion over 10 years. About $4 billion of that um, is actually in the form of reduced cost pharmaceuticals. 
Um, and a billion dollars of that is from uh, projected revenues of a new entity that would, would exist uh, when Purdue Pharma ceases to exist. So there's, there's some, um, some asterisks there. The nature of the plan has been evolving. Um, it evolved as, as recently as Monday, um, and we expect continued evolution of that plan. Right now, if the plan is approved as is, the state of Wisconsin would receive about $70 million. Um, again, that's over 10 years, and that's um, presumably a split between cash and uh, reduced price pharmaceuticals. Um, but it's the responsibility of the state and local government to negotiate that, and that has to be negotiated on a very, very tight time frame. So given the number of moving pieces and the tight time frame, uh, we, as the city attorney's office, are concerned that it's unworkable to come to the council, to come th to this committee when we have a final, uh, final proposal and say, would you approve this? So we're asking for uh, authorization to make all the necessary decisions uh, to represent the city um, as we try to navigate this to a, to a conclusion. Okay, then I'm looking for a motion to... I'll second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Yes. Thank you. Resolution number 16-21-22, 51721, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2021 and June 30th, 2023. All right, we've got a number of different recommendations which we're going to split out. The first one we're going to split out is uh, we are recommending approving the beverage operator's license application of Amanda Salazar. We've separated it out so that she can not vote on this one and just the three of you can vote on it. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor, aye. 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 Nays? And she All abstained, right, motion so, passed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, I'll name myself. I don't really know. <laughs> 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 Work's making me do it. <laughs> All right, the, uh, the next one would be to hold the beverage operator's license renewal application of Christine L. Pierce uh, for possible action at a future meeting. I make a motion to hold that license for Christine Pierce. Uh, second. Any discussion? Can I, can I ask why we're holding it? For possible action. So what happens is when, when we, we will meet as a staff okay. and go through everything and try to determine what's going on. And a lot of sure. times if there are questions, we'll hold it here and then we'll come back at a future meeting. With Sometimes it. it's also because we have to give notice. Okay. Uh, in this case, we haven't even decided for sure that we're going to non-renew or, or deny the license. So okay. um, we're doing some background check. Okay, yet. makes sense. All right. Any other questions? All right, looking for a motion. Do we have it? We had a motion. We had a motion. Oh, all okay. right. Because we need to vote. Looking for a vote. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Motion carried. And then the final motion would be to grant all of the other applications on the RO. I make a motion to grant all the other applications on the RO. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carried. Resolution number 17 21 22 21 submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2022. All right, we've got uh, four different uh, recommendations, but we don't necessarily have to split these out uh, as long as you incorporate them all into uh, the motion. They're all, they're all to grant, but there are just some uh, provisions in the granting. So we're recommending granting the change of premise applications of the wharf contingent on the applicant obtaining the necessary street festival permit. We're recommending granting the change of premises application of time and a half contingent upon the applicant obtaining any necessary permit, 
probably a street festival permit, and making any needed changes to the description uh, to be determined by staff upon clarification by the applicant. We're working with him on that. Uh, to grant the Class A liquor license renewal application of Meyer Stores LP, contingent on amending the application to include description language that has now been approved by my office. This is somewhat related to the one we've been holding for some time. They're now fixing it as part of the sort of the renewal application, uh, but there are a couple of little things they have to uh, complete, uh, but I expect that won't be a problem. And then to grant all other applications on the RL. I make a motion to uh, grant these as uh, per staff recommendations. Can I vote on this with the Art Center on here? Uh, you're not receiving any, well, maybe you should. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It, it, you're probably you not required to, to but okay. it's probably in your best interest yeah. to abstain. Okay. Oops. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain? Abstain. Thank you. All right, motion carried. RO number 18-21-22-517-21, submitting various license applications, um, change of premise. All right, so the committee, or the, yeah, the staff committee is recommending granting all of the changes of premise applications on this RO contingent on the applicants all obtaining the necessary street festival permits. These are all related to the summertime okay. Tuesdays, which is Tuesdays this year instead of Thursdays. Oh, okay. Yeah, I move a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Passed. Our next meeting date, next meeting date will be June 16th, 2021. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion on that? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Chair votes yes. <laughs> 517. I owe you an apology.